Well, the Rajya Sabha elections to 16 seats in four states take place this Friday and the entry of two media barons backed by the BJP in Rajasthan and Haryana has certainly queered the pitch for the two Congress candidates in these states. This is important because infighting in state units has given the BJP an opportunity to try and embarrass the Congress party. But the question is, will they succeed? In Rajasthan, there are three Congress candidates, Randeep Surjewala, Mukul Vasnik and Pramod Tiwari. Now, media baron Subhash Chandra, who is an independent backed by the BJP, has made a sensational claim today, saying that eight Congress MLA was, will actually cross-vote in his favour. The Congress has already been complaining about democratic malpractices, about horse trading, and that's why they've shifted more than 40 of their MLAs to a resort in Udaipur. The Congress, in fact, needs another two MLAs at least to be sure uh, of victory on all three Rajya Sabha seats. So the uh, smaller players, independents are also looking very, very crucial. Well, joining us now uh, is Senior Congress Leader Sachin Pilot uh, on, on this developing story. Uh, first of all, Sachin Pilot, uh, how do you look at Subhash Chandra's claims uh, that he's going to get eight uh, Congress MLAs to cross vote for him? I think it's quite laughable. Mr. Chandra, I think, has been fooled by the BJP into becoming a candidate independent. Uh, and then uh, the numbers are stacked completely against him. And I think this is a good time uh, for Mr. Chandra to realize that he must save his uh, dignity and bow out gracefully, uh, as opposed to being humiliated on the 10th when the votes are cast. Because the numbers are clearly in favor of the Congress party. And no matter how much uh, uh, attempts he may try to do and by calling MLAs or, or asking them to vote for him, the Congress MLAs, the regional parties that support our government and the independent MLAs are all together. In fact, we, we require 123 MLAs in the House of 200. We have way more than that who will come out and support all our three candidates. So there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. And also, Subhashi, she should understand, this is not a, a TV series or, or a... Or a or entertainment that he's trying to do. This is serious business. And uh, no matter what he says, the Congress party's three candidates will romp home with an emphatic victory. Okay, so if everything is so great, and as you say, your candidates will romp home, then why are your MLAs being holed up in a, in a resort in Udaipur? I'm sure it's nice, but obviously you're worried. Not at all. I mean, the BJP has all its MLAs in a hotel. Sadly, this has become a trend for every election, for every party in every state. Uh, ideally, it should not happen, but the thing is, when BJP puts up two candidates where it can only win one, clearly they will try and do some wooing of MLA, some allurement, some MLAs feel that they don't want unwanted, unwarranted pressure. And that's why they have to be together. They want to be together. No one is there against their will. It's just that they are in one place so that there are no undue pressures on them. And previously we've seen uh, the BJP has tried to lure MLAs with all sorts of incentives, etc. And uh, I don't think personally that this is the right way forward. But unfortunately, this has become par for the course. Again, but is that happening? Is, is that happening? Is there, I mean, are you saying that the BJP is trying to do that, that it's trying to, to lure your MLAs with all kinds of inducements? Like what? I mean, are, are, is that happening? Are people trying to reach out? If, if Mr. Chandra is claiming he's going to get more votes than he, than he should get, what does that mean? He should clearly spell out who are these people that he's approached, on what basis, the party, the, 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 the regulation is very clear, Didi. Every single party MLA has to show his or her vote when they cast it, right? So there's no question of a party MLA doing cross voting it doesn't happen. It's the independents who don't have to show the votes and they can cast their vote. Uh, and in fact, if they show the vote, then the votes get disqualified. Uh, it's a strange logic, but that's how it is today. So for all party MLAs have to vote according to the whip. The whip is for the party candidate. So I really don't understand the calculation that he has made or some other people independent who are making. Uh, as far as Aisan is concerned, we have more than numbers that we require. Now, actually, there's a specific reference that Subhash Chandra Sachin Pilot has made about you uh, in his press conference that he held this evening. Uh, you know, he, he said how, you know, your father was his friend, that you have an opportunity. You are a young, popular leader. You can use this opportunity, he says, to take revenge or to send a message to the Congress leadership. And if you miss this opportunity, you will not be chief minister until 2028. What would you like to say? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Chandra, uh, this just shows how hopeless he may have become, uh, trying to reach out to other people across the parties. Uh, he must understand that we have all worked uh, to become MPs and MLAs in our own right. And no one is going to fall for his trap, no matter what he does. This shows that he's clearly desperate and he's clutching at straws. Uh, to my mind, uh, there is no way he would have won earlier. There is no way he'll win on the 10th. And no matter what the BJP or Mr. Chandra try and do uh, in Haryana and in Rajasthan, both the states, the Congress party candidates will win and will handsomely, I might assure you. 
But Sachin Pilot, isn't it also a fact that the BJP is doing this because it senses that all is not well even in the Congress camp? In Haryana, for example, you mentioned Haryana. You have someone like Kuldeep Bishnoi, uh, you know, who's, who's sulking. Uh, Rahul Gandhi has apparently tried to reach out to him. Uh, in Rajasthan also, let's face it, you know, all has not been well for some time between you and Mr. Gehlot's camp. So do you think the BJP is taking advantage of these weaknesses within the Congress? Let me assure uh, the BJP that there is no advantage to be taken. They can try what they want. They can put up independent candidates. They can do pressure tactics, etc. All of our MLAs uh, and more will vote for our candidates. Um, the elections are on the 10th. We only have three days left now. So they all know that there is no majority to be had. And you see, it's very clear. The number of MLAs that each party has uh, you know, is, the, is the MPs you can send. So all this clever maneuvering that they're trying to do I think will yield no result whatsoever. And for Haryana also, we have we need 31 MLAs and we have some independents who are supporting us. And uh, you mentioned Mr. Bishnoi's name. He may not have gone to uh, Chhattisgarh, but he will certainly vote for the Congress party. Uh, but uh, can I just ask you on the choice of Rajya Sabha candidates? There's also been a lot of heartburn in your party on that. I mean, look at your state, Rajasthan. It's a state that's actually going into assembly elections as well in the next year and a half or so. And you have three candidates who are all outsiders. Uh, how has that played out? How, how is that being justified? I'm surprised, Nethi, that you asked me this question as a member of the Congress party. You've never asked Mr. J.P. Nadda why he sent Nirmala Sitaraman to one state, why Venkai Nadi was, was sent to Rajasthan, why Mr. Alphonse came to Rajasthan. National parties have national leaders who come to Rajya Sabha from different states. Dr. Manmohan Singh uh, was MP from uh, Assam, for example. So I think it's, it's pretty obvious that national parties need to send to the upper house people who matter and the people that have been uh, appointed as candidates for the congress party i mean the people with loads of experience mukul vasnik was in charge of rajasthan for nine years uh, mr tiwari has been mp for 10 times so if he's been sent to rajasthan and these decisions happen with consensus the leadership spoke to every state leader in rajasthan spoke to the party and the government and then they came up with a consensus so these are party candidates we are a national party it's not some regional party sending their candidates to across the states. And we have governments in only two states now. So clearly we need to have senior people speak up and be the voice of that state but in the upper house. But you don't think that in and an election-bound no state like Rajasthan, it would have been better to have had people from Rajasthan? Well, I don't buy that argument because these are for the upper house. The regulation is that anybody from any part of the country can contest. And national parties have that advantage that they can place the leaders in different states. So I really see no merit in this argument. And the same applies to Bharti and the party. The BJP sends its leaders from all across the country. I'm surprised why none of you ever asked them that question, that why are you sending X from a different state and Y from a different state? Why are these questions only applicable to the Congress? And we're happy with our choice. All of our MLAs have supported the decision. The state leadership is in, in full uh, agreement with what AIC has decided. So we'll have these three people and they'll all become MPs from Rajasthan. You're, you're saying that you all will romp home, you're in touch with the smaller parties and independents <laughs> as well. You're, you're claiming that they're all on your side. There's also a, a bunch of six MLAs actually who used to uh, belong to the BSP who had merged with the Congress, I think, back in 2019. But their status is still kind of con sort of co contested. Uh, Mayawati, however, has issued a whip to them to vote for, the, for, for Subhash Chandra. How is, uh, how is that being solved? How is that being sort of resolved? These MLAs did fight the election on the symbol of the BSP, but then the entire legislative party, the BSP, six members, then a whole lot of them merged with the Congress party. And the speaker has passed an order on it. Of course, the BSP is free to challenge that order in, in the court and that will carry on. But as far as the party is concerned, the entire legislative party merged with the Congress and now they're Congress members. So the Congress whip is applicable on them. Uh, the BSP, of course, is trying to find legal ways to stop that, but it won't hold uh, in the court of law because the entire party, lock, stock and barrel, merged with the Congress and the Speaker has passed and Speaker has great powers in these decisions. So I don't think that's uh, contestable. There, there have also been rumblings in, the, in, in Rajasthan, Sachin Pail. We've seen uh, some MLAs actually, in, uh, you know, considered to be close to Mr. Gehlot, who recently, you know, voiced uh, some dissent on, on, you know, specific issues. Is everything okay in the Rajasthan Congress? Are you and Mr. Gehlot getting you. along well let, now? Let me assure you, there are all sorts of stories that come in the media. People use social media, you know, to give out messages. Every MLA may have some grouse about the development in that area, wanting more budget or some issues with local you know, administration. But those are all issues that every MLA is, is allowed to make. I think in a, in a democratic setup, they can air their grievances. And the chief minister, the party president, and all of us have met them. And now every single one of those MLAs is on board 
happily and willing to uh, vote for our candidates and the entire legislative party plus our supporting MLAs are at one place. They'll be in Jaipur on the 10th. We will all vote for our candidates and they will all be home victorious. So you're saying uh, you need 123, but you're claiming that you all have many more than that on your side. I think we have more than what we require. All right, let's see what happens on Friday. As I, as I was saying earlier, Rajya Sabha elections used to be really boring, but clearly a lot has changed <laughs> in the last few years. Sachin Pilot, thanks very much.